I'm Sonia Dubell and we are here with Howard Napper. Howard has been teaching for almost 20 years. Mm, almost, yeah. That's a long time. It is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm very curious to know about your journey um, and mm. lots of other things. Yeah. We're going to talk about um, something that Howard has started doing for a while now, anti-aging or anti-anti-anti-aging yes. yoga and the concepts around it. But before, just very briefly, how did you get into yoga 20 years ago? Um, yeah. Uh, what was going on then? Well, my life was very different, as you can imagine. Um, I actually was in the, working in the film industry. Okay. And uh, to cut a very long story short, I, was I think I had a bit of a dependency on drugs and alcohol. Okay. And my life was a mess. I mean, it really was a mess. And um, I knew that it had to change. I didn't know what it was. I was uh, So depressed. you were in the rock and roll... You pulled yeah. era 20 years ago when it was all yeah. crazy. Yeah, okay. it was crazy. It was really crazy from what I remember. Yeah. Um, and somebody said, took me to a yoga class, or wanted to take me to a yoga class. I resisted, yeah. resisted, resisted, and went along. And to be honest, it was interesting because I thought, okay, here's an environment where nobody's drinking or taking drugs, and at least it's kind of safe. And that's why I went back. Wow. And um, the girls, how it? <laughs> well, it was also it was full of women, and I did think that that was kind of a, a plus. <laughs> God knew what you needed. Yes, I'm ashamed to say that, but that is the honest truth. Yeah. If I'm really going to say. But you know, whatever brings us there, because Absolutely. you've gone forward to teach so many people. Your DVDs are amazing, and I have to say that I love them. Thank I mean, you. I found a couple a few years ago and took them away on holiday with me and I was doing Howard Napa yoga the whole holiday. Wow. Barbados and Howard Napa is great. Nice. So I wish I was there with you in person. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. So the anti-aging yoga. Yes. How is, what is the, the energy that brought you to, to go through this well, arena? Realizing, I mean, I don't do styles of yoga. I like yeah. to work with people. What I realized that with a lot of people that I was working with, is that there were certain things that were coming up that people were suffering from. Mm. And one of the things that was strong for them, and also I was feeling it affecting me, is, is the process of age, mm. the process of aging. Um, and there's pressures that we are under because of it right now. Yeah. Um, there's an emphasis on youth and beauty yeah. in society, whether we like that or not, that's the case, right? Yeah. And when we start to feel that though we're losing that, the pressure is huge. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we then tend to have this knee-jerk reaction. We think that age is our enemy. It Why is it huge? I just think that, you know, many, th many things. I think, obviously, society, because of this value, mm. it, it, it seems to think that, we seem to think that if we don't have that, mm. then we're almost, it's almost like being bankrupt. Yeah. You know, it's like, almost like losing we all worthless. your money. We feel worthless. We so feel we don't have any value anymore. Because we've been told, sort of media-wise, that your value the is value your use. Yeah. And there's this thing of anti-aging. Yeah. And I find that really, it, it's bizarre, because that actually... It, it almost leads to this idea, it does, because it feels as though we can actually do something about the process. Right. Age isn't our enemy, no. illness is. Okay. And as we age, the problem that we have, because aging itself is about 20% genetics yeah. and about 80% lifestyle mm -hmm. and environment. Yeah. And if you're able to, to maximize that 80%, mm. then there's something called compression of morbidity. Compression of morbidity is basically that you live a long life or you live a life. Yeah. It doesn't matter how long it is. Mm -hmm. You live a life and at the end you have a very sharp decline, right. drop off. Okay. Rather than living a life and then becoming ill yeah. with a degenerative disease. Yeah. And then becoming dependent on other people, on the state or whatever it may and be. And on drugs. And on drugs. You. And in, you, know, you don't have independence as far as your, your ability to do things. Yeah. You're, you're bed, maybe bedridden or yeah. confined to the house. And then you have a very slow decline. So yeah. compression of morbidity is mm -hmm. the idea that you can compress the morbidity, in this case illness, into the smallest period of time in your life. By lifestyle choices. Basically, yes. But the whole work that I do is really defining what those choices are. Okay. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah, and do, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I now I want those choices. Right. Okay. What are the key? The four that I tend to work with. Okay. First one is exercise. Yeah. Now there is huge body of evidence to say that exercise 
Well, actually, I call it activity mm. because I class physical activity and mental activity. Mm. And it's important to have both. So it's activity, really. There's a huge amount of evidence to say that um, activity, mentally and physically, is going to improve, it's going to help you age. Absolutely. But you don't have to look at any of it. All you have to do is look at those people that keep active, mm. mentally or physically, and see how they age. As your example. It's so obvious. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so that exactly. one is nutrition. Nutrition. Okay. And nutrition is very important because it's basically, we are what we eat. I mean, it's a oh, cliche, but yes, it's yes. absolutely true. Yeah. Um, I don't like the word diet. I like to work with the idea of an eating plan. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the, 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 the eating plans that I work with mm -hmm. have an element of restriction, but at the same time, I don't deny myself anything. Yeah. So it's just a question of eating certain things in moderation of food, yes. which is very important. Yes. I work with an anti-inflammatory diet, yes. so it does restrict certain things, but it also encourages other things. Yes. I also work with a number of different, there's a paleo diet, which I tend to work with right now, which is basically trying to eat what we've ate throughout our time, in yeah. our entire evolution, because only in the last 1%, 99% of the time we've eaten a certain diet, in the last 1% of the time, we change that. And the biggest change with that is processed food, and particularly processed carbohydrate. So I'm starting That's to realize... That's a whole other show. It really is. Yeah. Because if you think about it, it's bread, pasta, pizza. Uh, the biggest anti-ager, I mean, sorry, the biggest um, thing for um, uh, premature aging, that's what yeah. I'm trying to say, is stress. Yeah. You don't have, again, there's evidence, but if you look at a prime minister or a president and you see yes. in their term of office how much yes. they tend to age, premature aging, if you want to It's right there. Brand. I mean, it's in front of you. They come into office, they're gorgeous and yeah. dynamic. Look at they Obama. They leave office and it's like somebody just pulled them through a wind tunnel yeah. backwards. Yeah, Obama four years ago was the primaries. Mm. Now he's got grey hair and he looks a very different person. Yeah. And we'd have to assume that a lot of that Okay, it's naturally aging, but a lot of that accelerated. has accelerated through the stress that he's under. So I work a lot with stress. It's, yeah. a, it's a fascinating subject. Um, it's love. really great. Finally, the fourth area is this concept of how um, the psychological effects of aging. Mm. And what is important is as we change mm. through our lives. So in our 20s, we didn't want the same things as we wanted in our mm. teens, in our 30s, in our 20s. We go through these stages of life mm -hmm. where there's biological change, psychological change, physical change, mm -hmm. and social change as well. Yeah. And what happens is that it's important to define new values to move forward. Yeah. The problem that we have is when we can't define the values, when we feel the value is of something younger, we tend to then resort back to those values. Yeah. So that's the classic example of a midlife crisis. Somebody, you know, a guy driving around in a sports car or, a, you know, a woman... Grey hair blowing in the wind. Yeah, exactly. Listen, it's gorgeous too, because that is gorgeous too. You can, you know, I don't have anything against, you know, getting older. Is There's such a beauty in it. If well, you if you see the value, grace, that's the thing. If you, if you define the value, then you can move forward. Yes. But what happens, people get stuck because they can't yes. see the value. So it's almost trying to find a road map yes. forward rather than looking back behind. Yes. And that's a lot of the work that I do psychologically. So the four elements are basically exercise. Activity, exercise. Exercise, yeah. activity, movement. Mental, physical. Yeah, mental and physical. Then our nutrition, which no, is goes without said. saying, Absolutely. you know, you are what you eat. Yeah. And then you move into the, did you say? Stress. Stress. The whole so stress of is stress. enormous, the yeah. way you are experiencing the stuff that's happening to you in your life. Particularly in this climate. I mean, I'm talking yeah. about, you know, the kind of financial climate. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very know, stressful. Five years ago, people wouldn't admit that they're stressed. Yeah. Now, every, unless, you are, unless you appear stressed, you don't even seem to be busy or important. Yeah, yeah. It's only stressed people that are kind of I'm important. I'm so busy, yeah. seriously, yeah. lots of stress. Lots of stress, um, yes. And then the fifth one is 